Good morning, everybody. This is uh, lecture four of the course uh, communication uh, system. My name is Amar Abdelbari. I am with nearest university. Uh, today I will continue in chapter two. Uh, last lectures we speak about the Fourier transform and how we work with the Fourier transform and the properties of the Fourier transform. Today is like uh, I will give you some uh, definitions, some deep uh, uh, analysis or some hints about some deep analysis that maybe you can use it or benefit from it uh, later. So this is in the uh, other title, subtitles or subheaders in the chapter 2. Okay? Some of the some of them I will not cover uh, because it's more advanced or more details, but I will give you some hints or some uh, general uh, uh, lines about this. And if you want to continue or read more, you maybe refer to the book, okay, or the other books in the uh, communication system. So let's begin. In this, uh, uh, here we will speak about the inverse relationship between time and frequency. So the time domain description, if it is changed, uh, the frequency domain changed accordingly, but in an in inverse manner. That is meaning that if I have uh, uh, an unlimited uh, or an uh, infinity in time domain, it will be finite or uh, finite in the uh, frequency domain. And vice versa, if it is infinity in the frequency domain, it will be finite in the uh, time domain. Okay, there is another thing we call it bandwidth here let's start we call bandwidth bandwidth meaning the measure of the extent of the signal in the spectrum of the positive frequencies so how many frequencies uh, this signal uh, contain or uh, extend in the uh, frequency spectrum so there is three definitions we use these three definitions is uh, the null to null frequency null bandwidth null to null bandwidth meaning that the main loop as the basic of the uh, definition of the bandwidth so maybe because you as before i speak about something like this okay but in reality it is not it is for example uh, a, a sync wave so it is like this for example so we speak about the main loop meaning that from here to here this is our uh, uh, bandwidth and the others we will uh, discard okay so 3 db bandwidth meaning that the separation between the freq zero frequency and the positive frequency if i uh, uh, remove this in some cases you may see something like this here so it is from this point here until this point here this is what we call the 3 db uh, bandwidth from zero frequency zero until the positive frequency where the amplitude is uh, reduced or dropped to one over uh, 2 to uh, the square root of the of, of 2 so this is the 0 uh, uh, the d 3db bandwidth for the root mean square bandwidth it is uh, the square root of the second momentum of the normalized form of the square amplitude so we you take the amplitude you take the square of this amplitude you take the mean of all of them all these points and you take then you take the root okay so this is the rms i will this is you can you will come later uh, to the uh, mathematical notations but this is here for the notation so here 
I have low pass type this is the low pass type and here from this point here it is uh, uh, band bus band bus we name it this is the band bus uh, uh, signal here and this one when it drops less than 1 over uh, square root of 2 and here higher than uh, 1 over this is the same low bus uh, this is just 3 dB and from null to null all of the bandwidths from here to here okay so this is just definitions for the uh, for the bandwidths the mon or the commonly used definitions okay he speak here about the time bandwidth product if you uh, multiply the duration of the uh, signal multiplied by the bandwidth that this signal uh, uh, take it will give you constant whatever the uh, the signal it is so if it is if you increase the bandwidth you will decrease the duration and so on okay another thing is the Dirac delta function so there is another theory uh, on top of the uh, Fourier transform they make some definitions or conditions sorry for the Fourier transform to be applied so they combine Fourier series and Fourier transform to be applied to uh, as a special case or uh, so they said that and I said this is before for the condition for the uh, Fourier transform but uh, here it is again if you take the uh, squ the square uh, that bar uh, of the or square of the signal and you take the uh, infinity uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity it should be finite number that it shouldn't go to uh, infinity okay that's how you can apply the Fourier transform uh, so here this is what he said another thing I will uh, skip the uh, here the uh, definitions and uh, and this here that the one that I said in the beginning uh, that if you have a signal in this is what he said here if you he take the for the delta that uh, yes let's speak about the direct uh, delta function direct delta function it's meaning that i have a value i have a value at zero only sorry let's make it more convenient so i have a value at zero okay this is zero I have a value and this value should be uh, zero time and one value at time zero and one value okay this is the rec function okay we use uh, delta delta as the uh, uh, notation for direct function or delta function so this function is everywhere is zero however it having amplitude at zero time okay so this function what is what we call it Dirac function okay so if you take the uh, Fourier transform for the Dirac function if you take the integration it will give you one okay if you take the uh, uh, we may express the integral of the product g, g of t any function multiplied by uh, a train of pulses uh, respect to t as something like the convolution you take the convolution of the signal your signal g of t uh, with the uh, sigma t minus t zero you will see that you will take the uh, signal at uh, the signal your signal g of t at t0 okay so this is uh, some meanings of the convolution so if you take the Fourier transform what is this? the information that's inside the delta if you take the Fourier transform of delta which will give you 0 only at 0 it is 1 at anything else it is 0 
so it giving you one only the Fourier transform of delta is one this is very useful of course if you see here it is one only or number or any value at zero and nothing else in frequency it have one on all frequencies so if you multiply this signal by any signal it it's just like you multiply one in the frequency domain okay so this is the meaning now let's see this is a of course application if you have a delta in the frequency domain because of the duality fun property of the Fourier transform you will get one in the time domain okay and if you make some uh, uh, shifting in the frequency domain you will get multiplication of exponential this is the same uh, properties of the uh, Fourier transform frequency shifting you will get here an exponential multiplied by one but it's here is also already exponential okay the Fourier transform of cosine cosine meaning that if you uh, uh, use error uh, formula you can uh, express cosine at is exponential of j2 by f of ct uh, plus j of to the power minus j uh, 2 by f of ct and the sine of course so the cosine if you take it in the uh, frequency domain because it's exponential and exponential and from this from here it is a shifting in the uh, delta so you can just express the cosine as two delta uh, one at minus f of c and one at uh, plus f of c here this is the sine, this is the cosine and the sign the difference only is uh, minus here so it just minus see, see this is a sign so you will see this is a sign okay so this is what we speak about this is uh, 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 the the benefits of uh, the react delta function there is another function we call it unit step you already know this one because you uh, already uh, apply for your transform and you take the uh, you see that it is converted to uh, a sync function so unit step function it's one and one over two and zero elsewhere before so it is like this zero at zero it is one over two at higher than zero it is uh, one okay this is unit step function and we name it as u u of t this is we name it as uh, delta this is delta of course this you remember this notation sigma do you remember this notation for sigma also signum function okay so the signum function we use it to uh, uh, convert the Fourier transform of exponential I, I said this before so here unit step function if we convert unit tip function uh, using for the transform if you retransform it to the uh, frequency domain you'll see that it is one step function uh, step, uh, unit step function is converted to uh, delta function plus one over plus a number here so it's like this one delta function plus this value okay one over two by f okay so this is the unit step function it's weighted by a factor of 1 over 2 occurring at 0 uh, frequency this is 1 okay so if you take the integration and you multiply it by unit step function this is the convolution can be viewed as a convolution again so you take the Fourier transform of any g of t as g of f in the Fourier transform multiplied by the Fourier transform of u of t okay so the effect of integration as you just multiply by delta which you giving you the uh, value of g of t g of uh, f at zero only because delta uh, function it's only have a value at zero and nothing else so everything multiplied by zero is zero okay 
so now let's go to another uh, I skip multiple things because I just want you to give you some hints about the important things there is already many details but to give you some uh, uh, hints or highlights about uh, important things in this chapter because uh, you need to know for example uh, what is delta function you need to know unit step function you need to know why we use it to express cosine or sine or something okay now for your trans for transform of periodic signal periodic signal here we can express it as a function uh, here periodic and the period is the fundamental pe period is t0 and fundamental frequency f of 0 okay so this function you take here at the one period okay so let's see here if you take the function at uh, it, it you take the summation over all the periods of this uh, function from minus infinity to infinity so this is like a pair of uh, Fourier transform and Fourier series okay so the periodicity this is the uh, uh, last result the periodicity in time domain meaning that uh, in the pulse like signal it is in discrete form in the as an integer multiples of the fundamental uh, frequencies so you see, you see a periodic signal in time domain you see a discrete form of the fundamental frequency and its multiplication its harmonic values so let's see for example here uh, this example here for example it's ideal sampling function it's, it is the sampling function uh, you take this, uh, this is the value of delta t, a t0, a t1, t4, 3, the m, of course. So you have a train of pulses or train of uh, delta functions. If you take it to the other side, you will take a train of a uh, delta function multiplied by f of 0 here. So it is like there, here. I have in the time domain delta function at 0 plus delta function at t0 plus delta function at t2 t0 3 t0 so it is a periodic signal in the frequency domain as stated previously you will see the same again but at the uh, uh, frequency the fundamental frequency t0 it's fundamental period 1 over t0 it is the fundamental uh, uh, frequency so you'll see a discrete uh, uh, signal that's discrete type of form of the signal at the fundamental frequency and the multiple and the multiplication of it this is uh, what is the meaning in this uh, point here okay so this is applicable to uh, other periodic signal let's say here the transmission of the signal through linear system so here i may reply uh, uh, review some uh, points from signal and system of uh, course uh, for example in a linear system you have an input uh, x of t you have an output y of t you have the response of the uh, uh, of the system whatever it is in our communication system for example it is a channel response you send the signal in the uh, uh, in the air for example or in the optical fiber so there is uh, some response of this uh, uh, medium so this response is convolved with the signal convolved with the input to the uh, this uh, media or this channel okay we name it channel here so what is happening is a convolution this is the convolution uh, equation you shift every time and you take the summation it is shift and take the some sum multiplication and at all you take the summation at, uh, at the end so it is weighted 
uh, integration weighted integration of all the history of the uh, input signal okay or the uh, history of the channel so this is the uh, convolution uh, I will skip this this is how it's uh, the filter for the integration this is uh, the properties of the uh, time invariant system so we need to work with a time invariant system so for one of the uh, casualty casualty means that is there is no response before the execution is applied so it's not if before t uh, is zero it is zero h of t it is zero there is nothing it depend, doesn't depend on the past stability meaning that is if you enter uh, a finite value a bounded input you should get a bounded output okay bounded input bounded out bible okay so this is uh, uh, how this so x of t should be less than a value whatever the value is m finite value of 5 4 twin whatever so the output of the convolution should be the same should be less than another value or the same value but it should be bounded okay this is the stability now the linear in time invariant to be stable stability should should we he speak about causality stability bounded input bounded output should be less than infinity the frequency response here this is the frequency response of the uh, input and output it is like you uh, take if you have here x of t as exponential so you take the shifting of the exponential you take the convolution uh, you just put the value of the x of t and make shifting in the time where is t minus tau and here he just uh, 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 split the uh, exponential or the power so here this is here it is this is uh, Fourier and here this is just multiplication by an exponential okay so in the here he just want to prove that it is y of t now it is like i take the uh, the Fourier transform from h of t multiplied by x of uh, exponential here y of t so this is state that if i convert to the uh, uh, frequency uh, in the if i have a convolution this is the uh, if I have a convolution in the time domain, in the frequency domain, if I take the uh, Fourier transform for the h of t and the without uh, taking the convolution, the h of t and the uh, x of t, I can make the multiplication in the frequency domain. So the convolution, this is the result, the convolution in time domain meaning a multiplication in frequency domain okay and the convolution in frequency domain meaning a multiplication in uh, time domain okay so to get the result y of t or y of f you may go two path one by taking the convolution in time domain between h of t and uh, x of t and then you will get y of t okay this is one Another thing is to take the Fourier transform for h of t to get h of f and to take the convolution for x of t to get the x of f and then multiply both of them to get y of f. Maybe if you return back, you take the inverse Fourier transform to get y of t. This is two ways to get uh, the effect to know how would the channel uh, affect your signal and you get the result the result is the received signal okay so here uh, let's see yes here the speak another thing is the ideal low pass filters the filters what is meaning by a filter a filter is a frequency selective system we use it to limit the spectrum of the signal to uh, uh, extract or discard other frequencies or 
okay so we need to select some frequencies or some band from this frequency band that is we desire other frequencies we don't want to see it in. so we will make it zero we multiply it by zero so it is zero so ideal one it is like this from minus p to b the the free the uh, the bandwidth that we want and we will multiply by one other we will multiply by zero okay so this is the ideal one the ideal uh, 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 frequency domain uh, in the frequency domain with the ideal uh, filter in the low pass filter in the frequency domain or high pass from uh, b my uh, plus 2b to 3tb b for example whatever it as you remember if you uh, uh, see here this is ideal but we don't see this in reality if you uh, take the Fourier transform for the square this one rectangular you will see the sink that is uh, we take it before and if you take the inverse Fourier transform okay so in reality there is some uh, uh, we call it we there is some here there is some ripples which make something else we 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 don't desire and in reality it's not like this it's not sharp like this okay so there is some limitations so we have approximations for the uh, uh, these filters okay and according to this approximation we make this approximation using some parameters okay so with the approximation improving with the increase of the delay for example t of zero so here he tried to cover these approximations okay so i will so for example here it is not ideal so it is not a, a line here so there is some ripples here and some ripples here some oscillations so they make some uh, work to uh, to achieve the uh, what is uh, desired okay so i will i just want to see you here to, because this is out of us the scope of our course but i want to uh, remember that we don't have this ideal one in reality we have something like this some ripples here some ripples here but this is the oscillation frequency or uh, some frequency but they should make this fraction as small as possible so they have the percentage here overshoot in the filter is approximately nine percent the overshoot is practically independent of the filter bandwidth frequency okay so they have some uh, 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 using the p multiplied by t they uh, control it to have this fraction more smaller so the, the doesn't affect our signal okay this is like what they said for pt uh, it's 20 pt 100 okay and this is other uh, there is of course some other approximations here so what i said today uh, is about uh, what is delta function what is a unit step function how we can use delta function to describe cosine and sine uh, if i have a signal that is infinite in time domain i will see it as finite in frequency domain and vice versa uh, i revised what is convolution and this is the effect of the channel so if you have like input and output you know that there is a channel effect and the channel effect in the time domain conv convolution in the frequency domain just multiplication and we use Fourier transform to convert from one to another uh, we work with uh, time invariant system we i revised what is casualty what is uh, stability uh, bound to bound with input on bound uh, input bound with output pipe so uh, uh, what is a filter 
and why it is in it is in in ideal case it is uh, uh, rectangular uh, but in re reality it is not rectangular there is some ripples in the top of this filter and uh, it is not actually zero okay so there is some limitation there is some other parameters uh, that you may uh, if you're interested in reading about it you may see how to control this parameter to make more accurate or more approximately a, a, a filter that you can use it to uh, just a, a, a recover your signal only or the bandwidth uh, the band uh, frequency band that you uh, have interest in okay here in 2.8 and others there is some uh, definitions that's more related to uh, probability and how we work with it. so i will uh, uh, leave this energy spectral autocorrelation autocorrelation meaning that uh, if i have two signals uh, what is the autocorrelation of them what how how correlation how they are uh, related to each other maybe the random processes so uh, i think this is maybe uh, lived for the chapter of random process uh, maybe they uh, there we can focus more on these uh, subjects okay uh, I think there is nothing here we can cover more so this is uh, discarded of this uh, scope of these chapters cross correlation between X of T and Y of T okay Okay, uh, numerical uh, computation of the Fourier transform. Fourier transform, it is mathematical uh, tool, and uh, as you know, the computer want to calculate more accurate, more uh, specific. So uh, some uh, methods come up to uh, make it more fast. So we have here fast Fourier transform algorithm. Fast Fourier transform algorithm is an algorithm that can be computed in the computer or by processor to give you the results more uh, uh, accurate and uh, uh, computational, uh, less com complex than uh, taking the Fourier transform uh, in its exponential uh, form. Okay, so uh, this is also out of the scope of this course but uh, later we may use for example a box for fast Fourier transform so you have in mind that the box for filters meaning something the box for uh, uh, taking the fast Fourier transform meaning something it is the same as you take the Fourier transform but it is a it is more computational you take some division you divide your signals you take some uh, you make the integration as some mission, some submissions uh, around each uh, part of the signal so it is more uh, computational to uh, uh, decrease or reduce the computations inside the computer or inside the microprocessor and more more efficient so you take uh, uh, the same result or uh, uh, a very accurate result okay so as I said here, it's H is take the number of complex results from computation stored in the same memory. So you they uh, uh, save the memory and save the uh, number of computations. So it may make it more uh, efficient. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening.